Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks so much for joining us again. Uh, we'll be talking about articulatory phonetics and continuing the discussion. Um, articulatory phonetics is again the study of how speech sounds are produced in the vocal tract. In this video, we will focus on how to navigate the International Phonetic Alphabet Chart. If you haven't already, I would really encourage you to look at two other videos first before you look at this one. A video on how linguists describe consonant sounds and how linguists describe vowel sounds. Because the criteria that linguists use for describing both of those sounds are really important for understanding how to navigate the International Phonetic Alphabet. So why do we even need the IPA, or the International Phonetic Alphabet, you may ask? Well, consider some of the problems that are inherent to the English writing system. The English writing system, in its current form, is basically a hangover of Old English. So you might have one letter that actually can be realized as a number of different sounds. Conversely, you might have multiple sounds that could be encoded in just one letter. So that's why we need the International Phonetic Alphabet, and it was devised as a way of introducing more one-to-one -one correspondence between sound and symbol. So if you hear a certain sound, then you always write it with a certain symbol. And conversely, one symbol always represents the same sound. So first, let's talk a bit about how to navigate the International Phonetic Alphabet Chart for consonants. Here you see the IPA chart for consonants, with the sounds used in English highlighted. On the leftmost column, we have the manners of articulation, while the topmost row represents the places of articulation. Within each of the boxes, IPA symbols representing voiceless sounds are placed to the left, and symbols representing voiced sounds are placed to the right. You may also notice that some boxes are empty with either white or gray space. If it's gray space, it actually means that those sounds are judged anatomically impossible to produce, whereas the boxes with just white space mean that there are no known languages that are attested to use that sound. Now let's talk about the IPA chart for vowels. As you can see, only the monophthong vowels are represented here, and the vertical domain on this diagram represents vowel height, while the horizontal domain represents vowel backness. Where pairs of symbols occur, rounded vowels are represented on the right-hand side, while unrounded vowels are represented on the left-hand side. It is worth noting that the only rounded vowels used in North American English are all back vowels. Just a brief note on representing diphthong vowels. Remember that diphthongs involve two vowel qualities. So the diphthong A, as in face, starts out at A and ends at I. I, as in the word lie, starts out at A and ends at I. Ow, as in the word house, starts at A and ends at U. O, as in the word row, starts out at O and ends at U. And finally, OI, as in the word boy, starts out at O and ends at I. Alright, so what have we covered in this video? We first talked about the need for the International Phonetic Alphabet, and then we talked about how to navigate the IPA chart for consonants and for vowels. Uh, just a couple other resources you might be interested in. First, do be sure to check out the other videos on uh, the criteria linguists use to describe consonant sounds, as well as the video for describing vowel sounds. And also, if you access this site, you can see an interactive IPA chart, which will also give you uh, links to images of ultrasounds, which show you exactly what your tongue and other articulators in the vocal tract are doing during the speech process, as well as diagrams for the vocal tract more generally. Well, that's it for this video. Um, thanks so much for watching.